want us to look at bearing fruit as a starting point. Amen. Second Peter chapter one, verse verse one. Second Peter, have you found it? Turn quickly, please, because we want to end early today. Second Peter chapter one, verse five. Besides this, all right, giving all diligence. Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, to patience godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forsaken that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the brother, brother, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. And for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Can somebody bring this pulpit downstairs? Please. I feel lonely up here. No. The Bible's progress. Oh, good. I'm glad you came for the camera. Helpful. No. Um, the Bible says. All right. The Bible says uh, that you should bear fruit. How many of you here have children, students, have children? Any of you students with children? How many are hoping to have children? Very good. No. It's a good idea. Amen. Are you feeling cold? The ladies are feeling cold. If you are feeling cold, move to a warmer place or sit by somebody who is warm. Now, are you listening? Are you hearing? Now, when the Bible, the Bible says that we should neither look at verse um, 8. If these things mean you, they make you that you shall neither be barren in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ English language that you will be neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ so that means that within the knowledge of Jesus Christ you can be barren and unfruitful are you listening to me? so he said that if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren, these two things, barren nor unfruitful, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. So within the knowledge of Jesus Christ, God does, expects us to be not barren. And he expects us to be fruitful. But unfortunately, there are many Christians who know Christ, know about Christ, know about the things that Christ does, is doing, will do, has done, and in that knowledge, they are barren and they are fruitful in terms of Jesus Christ and the knowledge of Him, having known Him. And that is unfortunate. Amen? Because it's like God has given you everything and has presented you with so many facts and truths and yet there is nothing to show for your Christianity just coming to church just listening to messages just hearing pastors preach Sunday after Sunday but there is nothing that is fruitful about you and we can actually say you are barren a salted land when we plant corn in you have you noticed nothing grows on the beach small trees like coconuts 
are the only ones that can go. Because they are barren. And the Bible is teaching that it is a bad thing. Now, some years ago, I was taking a taxi from uh, somewhere in London, a black cab, and uh, as I was going along, you know, the driver sits right in front there, and I asked the driver, do you believe in heaven and hell? Do you believe in God? He said, certainly not. And I said, do you believe in heaven and hell? He said, no, certainly not. I do not. So I said to him, he asked me, do you believe in God? Do you believe in heaven? And I said, I do. I certainly do believe in heaven and heaven and hell. I believe in God. And then he said, let me ask you a question. And he said, if you believe in God, and you believe in heaven, a place like heaven, why don't you kill yourself and go to heaven now? And if you think about it, or if you know that some of you are so young, you are full of faith, hope, and love, because your heart has not been punctured, Santrimo, broken heart. So there's, it's full of love, trust, faith. But after some experiences, you will begin to see that the love is going down. The zeal for so many things going on. You get it. But as you go through life, you realize a lot of bad and painful and difficult things in life. But you will tell yourself that it may be better over there. So why not just go there? This is too much better. Now, why don't go now? The answer is simple. We can go now. Because there is a reason why God brought us and saved us and put us on this earth for every single person here today. Whether you are a shepherd or you are a sheep or a goat or a deer or you are an animal without portfolio, you are supposed to bear fruit. Hallelujah. Take me to Ephesians chapter 2. We'll come back to First Peter. Ephesians chapter 2. It says, For by grace, in verse 8. Are you going to find any Ephesians? If you are anywhere around Daniel, you are lost. Come nearer. Alright. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Verse 10. Notice verse 10. Everybody, verse 10. Let's all read it together. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Let's read it again. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Let's read it again. For we are his workmanship. Again. For we are his workmanship. Again. For we are his workmanship. One more time. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Again. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. One more time. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Again. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Again. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. One more time. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You are created unto something. I said you are created unto something. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. One more time. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Created unto good Not just created. You are not just a new creature. When the man is in Christ, he's a new creature or a new creation. You are not just created in Christ, but you are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Francis, yeah. stand up. He has good works that he was born again unto. Huh? If you were not born again, where would you be by now? 
I don't know. I'm in a very bad place. A very bad place. What would you do right now? Well, Larry, if you were not born again, you'd be dead. He thinks you'd be dead. Erica, what would you do if you were not born again? You do not like to think about it. So you were created, Francis, for some good works. What are these good works? Where are these good works found? How can you be involved in these good works? The Bible says, which God has before ordained that you should walk in them. Let's all say that part. Which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Again, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Again, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Which God has before? Which God has? Which God has before ordained? Everybody say before ordained. Before ordained. Before ordained. Before ordained. Before ordained. Which God has before? Which God has before ordained? That we should walk in them. Amen. So Francis. There are things before or day that you are supposed to walk in. May you find these things that God before you came around, started moving around. May you find these works. One day I was going through Heathrow Airport and I saw that there stopped some people and they were deporting them back. And I was feeling very sad. You know why? It's that the reason why they came. You see there, you see that is London. And it's like, no, go back. The things you are before are going to enter. You are not entering, they are taking you back to the plane. Go back. Go back. Go away. You will never walk on those streets. The purpose for which you flew all the way, you will never walk here. Go back, go back, stop, refuse entry, return to country of origin. Go away, and you will disappear from this earth. You disappear from Heathrow Airport. It happened to Park. He was very angry with them. He kept him at the airport. He's, he's, a, he's a person, what do they call that? Personal numerata. And he's not appreciated. Wanted. Enjoyed. He's not enjoyed. Go back. They kept him in a, in a bath, in a room, in a place. No way, no way. He's the actual imperial thing. Go back on the plane. Go out of our country. We don't want you. That you feel, how sad you feel because the purpose for which you came you never ended. And that's why people are still thirsty and are still struggling to find. I see, I see so many things. People are still, people think, you know, when I go to London, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> And so they have in mind that all I want to do is I just want to get to London. Then you go see them again. It's and then they, they say, oh, I just want to get out of London. Lord help me. I want to go to the States, Lord. I hear it's better in the States. And then they start to try to go to the States. And they get to the States. One day I, I met a brother in the States. And I said, brother. Maybe it would have been better that you didn't come here. And he said to me, Pastor, I think it would have been better that I never came to this place. Because he did not experience the American dream. He experienced the American nightmare. And he was trembling. I have, she was shivering. I, was, I, I have done fundraising in America, in England. And I'll do fundraising. I say, I want people to do 100 pounds. And you see people in the church about this size. Three people will give 100 pounds. Then I want somebody to give 50 pounds. 
Three people will also get benefit. I want those who can give 20 pounds, maybe about 10 people. And those who can give 5 pounds, and then you see about 5. And then those who can give 1 pound, and you see a lot of people. And those who don't have any money at all, don't have any 1 pound, stand up. And all those stand up and you see them. Everybody who has been in London for more than five years meet me outside. I said, how many years? Twelve years, seven years, ten years, eight years. I said, I need five hundred pounds or one thousand pounds for nobody. After twelve years, nobody had a thousand pounds. After seven years, nobody had. They were looking at me like cows in the, in the, in the, in the field. <laughs> Sometimes I tell her, I said, look, in Accra, I have people who just wake up and do things. I told them one day the millionaires come and meet one of the millionaires said, what, what are these talking too much? That was because of thousand dollars, five hundred dollars. After a year, I said, look, I'll give you fifteen thousand dollars. I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy the too much talking. No, I don't appreciate it. Lord, I just want to love it. If I have a beloved, I'll be happy. Jesus said it to him. He said, He that drinketh of this water will test him. But he that drinketh of the water that I shall give him will never test him. The waters in this world, we are drinking and we are still thirsty. We have got the money that we thought we would have and we are still thirsty. We've got the cars, we thought, if I can just drive in this car, oh God, all I need is a car, Lord. Just let it be a car. Now you have a car, and you want another car. And you have another car, you want, oh Lord, I want another car. I want a bigger car, Lord. I don't like a Korean car anymore. Lord, I just want a German car. You have a German car. I don't, I don't like German cars anymore. Lord, I want a four-wheel driver. No, Lord, I, I don't want just a four-wheel driver. I just want something from America. You get a beloved. Your beloved is flaming. <laughs> of a certain dimension. <laughs> After you've been with her for some time, you look at it. <laughs> no more appreciating this kind of fair. Lord, I just want something else, Lord. My beloved is too dark. I want somebody who is fair, Lord. I don't like the fair, beloved, Lord. I want a white woman, Lord. When you see those who married white women, I was talking to one brother. I said, Master, I just... You see, I've seen all the, those who have this, but they are not happy. Then he said, I just want this one. And I've seen those who have, I was talking to them. And said, when, when I come, when I come home in the evening, they give me some salad. They give me some small salad. And I should eat that one. <laughs> It's not pasta, it's not easy. It's not easy. Lord. He said to me, 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 he said to me,
My wife is too, she's too fat. And I said, ah, this one is fat. We've not seen a fat one. We've not seen And it's never enough. I want this, I want that. I don't, I don't like my hair. I don't, I don't like my short hair. I just want long hair, Lord. Like you can help me have long hair, Lord. I just want to change my hair, Lord. I don't like it long anymore, Lord. I just want a rasta, Lord. I like the rasta I saw. Lord. Oh, Lord, I don't like the rasta anymore. I just want a wig, Lord. I don't want a wig anymore, Lord. I just want curly hair, Lord. I just want... What is wrong with you? None of these things can satisfy you. If that drinketh of the water that I shall give him, he shall never thirst again. I've watched people search for this thing one after the other. Oh. It never ends. The search never ends. The search for something. You see, the, uh, and the frustration, and the reason is there's an agitation within you. I'm, I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something. And then what you are looking for is the quest in every man to find the reason why he is here. To find the reason why he's around in the first place. I mean, what is this about? What is going on? What's going on? What's going on? Why am I here? Start thinking intelligently. Start asking important questions now. Become a wise chicken. We need some wiser chickens who will ask good, important questions. You see, a lot of chickens today, thousands and thousands who are being fed by good Christian called Kwamina Daku. <laughs> the man comes in the morning with his uh, food and he feeds them. And the chickens are appreciating and enjoying them. This man loves us. He gives us food in the morning and gives us water. We are just happy here. We just move around. We fellowship with our friends. He calls the doctor for us. In the evenings, they keep us more food. Have you thought of such a thing before? He calls the doctor when we are not feeling well. He looks, oh, and we are just eating. We are just happy. But we are need a wise chicken to ask some questions. We hear that last. Yeah, by this time, there were some similar people just like us in this same place. <laughs> and those are not of the same kind were just here. <laughs> Where are they? We hear that last year around this time, they were a lot even just like we are. Where are they? Somebody must ask. And then we were told that around Christmas time, it wasn't easy. The man changed his character. <laughs> the man changed suddenly. We were there. They, they came and they, 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 they came and collected. And one of the chicken must say that I was moving to town and so I said, things I bought. Chicken and chips. And I was wondering what it means. <laughs> Who are the chickens that are eating there? Somebody must ask some questions. Where am I about? Where, are we? where, where am I going? What's the next thing? Are these people not just like me? Can I just see that they are also not happy? What are they still searching for? They seem to have the things I am getting and they still don't seem to be happy. Yeah. I have to just like myself. I saw them go. They have this, they take this one too, and they are gone. Where are they? Zechariah verse chapter 1 verse 7. Where are your fathers? Where are the prophets? Do they live forever? No. I used to my father. I remember when my father was alive. He used to travel all the time. And the other day I was walking to London, I was thinking about it, just as my father used to go to London, if I used to fly on KLM, just as I also fly on KLM, all the time. And I'm just in the same walk, and soon a point will come and I will not be 
my existence? And where am I going? What is going to happen? Why am I here? What, how long do I have? And when I look at the Bible, I will say the Bible says, well, what is your life? It is a vapor. Just a brief. It's a, that appears for a while. A short time, the Bible says, and vanishes. I am a vapor and I will vaporize. You are a vapor and you will vaporize. And it's a very brief appearance. So what shall I do during my brief appearance on this earth? What shall I do with my brief appearance? I'm just up here. It's like a stage. You just you just come and then suddenly there's nobody on stage. And then you just go. And it's your turn. And you come. And what's your, what will you do for the few this thing that you are around? And then you hear the red flag goes up. Or the wife like goes up and it's time to clear up and then you're off. The next moment the next moment you hear another one has been moved off the scene. Where where are they? Where what did they go? Where did they go? So brothers and sisters, God is calling on your intelligence today. And he's telling you that there is more there is in the purpose for your life beyond education, physical things, money, get this, get that. He said that that you may be neither unfruitful nor barren in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The knowledge of Jesus Christ, once you are in that knowledge, you must not be barren, dry. There's nothing that can come from you. There's no other person that's coming from you. There's no church that's coming out of you. There's no preaching that is coming out of you. There's no works of God that is coming out of you. Where are the works? Where are the fruits? Why are you barren today, my sister? You are barren because you have chosen to be barren. You are barren because there are many diseases in you that need to be cured. When you look at this scripture, it talks about the things you must do before you can be fruitful. Notice verse 5. The second feature. Second Peter chapter 1. What does it say? Are you there? And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, to patience godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness charity. For everything being you and about they make you that you shall neither be barren nor from the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sit and present. Listen. When a man and a woman are together, all right, and they want to have a child or a baby, you know, you can just say, have babies. But before the baby comes, you get it. A lot of things have to work. A lot of things have to work before a baby comes. The man has to have testes. Do, do you understand when we say testes? You don't enjoy what I'm saying. Do you, do you enjoy what I'm saying? The man has to have testes that work. He has to have his testes must produce um, stems. Because there are some who have testes and the testes do not produce stems. For those of you who fornicated before, you will know that when you fornicate, or apart from those who are married, most of you are not married, that when you ejaculate, something comes out. That fluid is not stems. That fluid contains stems when everything is okay. 
so you can have that fluid coming out more no spell not even one is the next <laughs> it's not a simple thing I tell you and then not only must you produce a stem or a seed but you must produce a lot millions when we take one millimeter cubed of the stem there will be a lot of the semen there must be a lot of living stems moving, wriggling, wiggling, squirming, pulsating spams. <laughs> Do you enjoy what I am sharing with you? <laughs> Potent ones. <laughs> The semen has to have fructose for the stem to eat, to get energy. As they are moving, they are moving. And they are moving. Energy. Keep me, Lord. Help me to get there, Lord. I just want to be the one who's going to get there, Lord. Help me, Lord. I just want to be him, the one who's going to make it out of the millions and then they must have tails that make them able to swim fast sometimes they are there and they are a lot but they will need tails and strength to be moving squirming pulsating wriggling swimming then sometimes the stem that is coming the chromosomes in them are not correct they have hearts the, the child that is bringing has a heart which is uh, there's a hole in the heart or it has a heart which has the blood vessel going here or going somewhere or it has a mentally uh, you know uh, this thing not encouraging brain you know it has one like that <laughs> or it has a, a, a seed that has a, a stem that has something that is not good you see like that's why we say that some of my AS two AS people marry and if the stem has the S the other one who has an S and the two meat is SS and then a whole lot of other things are coming with it so sometimes different things and that's why sometimes people have are pregnant after three months the body naturally says that this thing the brain will not work the heart will not work the leg will not be formed the arms will not be formed so it's not good so we will abort and that's something that happens, it happens after just 12 weeks then it just goes off a lot of things have to go on before just one child then the woman she must have a womb so even the, the man's own crowd looks for, and then the man's penis must work he must be able to have an erection Enjoy what I'm saying. The most commonly prescribed drug in the world is a drug to help men have erection. It's one of the commonest. So all of you youngers, when you marry and your husband is strong and he is trying to have sex with you on a daily or by daily or tri daily basis lift your hand and say Lord glorify thy name to thy daughter <laughs> because <laughs> it may 
may not always be like that. The hour may come when it's not look at this. I am not having the strength that I used to have. <laughs> then the woman Thalamus will send a message to the pituitary gland and tell the pituitary gland which is sitting between your two optic nerves behind your eyes and tell you that tell the pituitary gland send a message another hormone to come down and the, that one too will send a message down to your ovaries and that one must have ovaries <laughs> It's not easy to have a child though. When you see people just go, I am pregnant, I'm going to the pictures. It, it means a lot of things are working. A lot of things are working. That's what the master said. If you have virtue, your virtue, knowledge, temperance, faith, patience, this, then you can be fruitful. And you don't have a whole lot of things, that is why you are not bearing fruit. Some of you are lacking a whole lot of things, that's why no baby is coming out of you. We are coming. And then every two will get the information. Release! On day number 13 or 14. And then it's coming. And then the husband and wife have to meet on that day. On that day. So the, 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 when the, the when the ovary ovary is here here when the ovary releases the egg then the egg comes out then it must find a certain opening in the fallopian tube called, where the fimbriae are and where the, the the end of the what do you call it is that what do you call it yeah the fimbriae are big ones that are they are just open there and then the egg has to go in there. The egg has to just be going cool. I'm waiting for my man. I know he's coming. I know he's coming from down below. I know he's coming from down below. <laughs> then, so the the, tube, the womb is like it's like the body is here. So the, the egg is now rolling here slowly and inside the tube there are very little hairs called cilia am I right? little like that and then they, are, they, are, they help to brush the come on baby come on baby and they just help to you get what I mean? Uh-huh. come on you can do it you can do it. And the spam too is coming this way. Come on now. You are the one. You are the man. You are the man. <laughs> and the senior begin to clap. There. It's going to be a boy. It's going to be a boy. I see an ex coming down the pipe, man. I see a wife. For the egg to, it must be, the spam is either X or Y. That's what the lady did. It's only X. So they are coming. meet in there right in the tube there and they meet they must be compatible sometimes there are some immunological things that don't allow the meeting and that when they meet I it's like mm. is, is that our name is what <laughs> <laughs> It's not working. Or maybe the term will just swim in. 
woman. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want anybody to come. I don't want anybody to want me. I'm not sure you have them. That's bad. Miss. Or. Oh. Uh, husband may come to his wife. You get it on the day of <laughs> but, uh, maybe they've quarreled on that day. <laughs> I don't want to see you. So the egg will be released because the Bible Talamos has sent a message to the victory. The victory has sent a message to the ovary. The ovary has released the egg. So the egg is just, I'm waiting for my man. I'm waiting for my man. Lord, send somebody to touch me. Lord. Touch me, Lord, today. Touch me, Lord. But nobody comes. Because they quarreled in the house. From the head, they did not Foolish girl, I don't really want to see your face again. And the quarrel. Now the egg, it has gone only 48 hours. So it, it stays the way. I'm waiting for my Lord, please send somebody, Lord. I'll be waiting, Lord. Oh, Lord, touch me, Lord. Just another touch, Lord. And he doesn't come. Or, or maybe, or maybe the other way around. Uh, the 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 sperm comes and then the sperm goes I'm a man and he's going he's going he's times he and he gets there and today's maybe Tuesday and he's swimming he's looking oh Lord Lord I'm looking for her I'm looking for her but she doesn't come she's not released uh, or she released later or she, she, she came at the wrong time and he has only has 72 hours the stem can stay alive for 72 hours the eggs can stay alive for 48 hours so when you time the thing this one's dying this one is oh so before then when they meet and then it's working oh lord we are together again then the, the two the egg and the whatever well, they form now they, they start to well, then they start two days three days four days Five days old, and then the eggs are multiplying. The thing is changing, and then it comes into the womb, and it comes to settle in the womb. But maybe the womb, the lining of the womb, you know, because of some abortions, and you know, when they were scraping, <laughs> so the womb is now scarred and all kinds of you know infections and problems. So when it comes, it's like, oh, I'm trying to settle here, Lord. Oh, there's nowhere here. Okay, let me try the right side. You try the right side. I say, ah, there's nothing there. You go to, oh, nowhere here. And it's, it's not getting settled now. Jesus. So before somebody brings forth a child, a lot of things have to work correctly. Come on now. Are you still around? Uh -huh. I gave you that physiology and anatomy and whatever lecture for you to understand what it means for you to bear fruit. Uh, before you will ever come forth with a church, with a soul, with a good work, before you will ever be somebody in the house of the Lord, really bearing fruit as you should be, a whole lot of things at the back there that we normally don't even think about. And we don't even know. All these things I'm saying, some of you didn't even know. Oh, yeah. Some of you thought that, you know, uh, if this is, if uh, uh, I, I'm just like a normal. I've seen people that they're so surprised that they couldn't have children. I've seen guys who have slept with so many girls, and it's like, hey, man, I must be normal. I must be whatever. And it's like, there's not, not the stem. <laughs> I see a lot of things you don't see. A whole lot of things have to work. And the reason why many of us are not bearing any fruit is because a whole lot of things are not working correctly. Help me, Lord. Ask somebody, 
what's not working what is working is something working as a person is something working in you is something not working in you now let's look at some of the things that are supposed to work is that not so verse, verse 5 besides all this giving all what diligence that's the first thing so this you can take it to be the stems that are strong diligence there must be diligence in the seed what does it mean to be diligent what does it mean to be diligent to be hardworking, persistent and consistent people who are not hard working do not do well in God if you don't want to work hard you will not be at the camp you will not I mean it takes a lot of hard work for anything to come on did you know that it takes a whole lot of hard work if you are lazy you will never bear fruit in the house of the Lord and I've come to see that lazy people do not do well in the house of the Lord so your laziness must be cured laziness must be cured and diligence must come into diligence means that consistent persistent hard working kind of character persistently hard working consistently hard working Bible says, have you seen a diligent or consistently hard working person? He will stand before kings. She will stand before kings. So as you wonder, how does somebody get to a certain position? The person is consistently and persistently hard working. Just, just that alone. The first thing is diligence. Pastor Patrick, how long have you been in Tamale? Um, seven years now. Seven years consistently and persistently working hard in Tamale. Go to Tamale you will see the fruit of his labor. Consistently and persistently working hard. And some of you are not prepared to. You are prepared to work hard for anything else except for the work of the Lord. You are prepared to go to school. Oh Lord, I just want to have my master's Lord. Lord, I, I, I chose the wrong degree Lord. I, I want to do a different degree. Lord, I, I just want to change my course Lord. Lord, I chose so, sociology and social science and Lord. Lord, I, I just want to do administration Lord. I, I'm going to have a better opportunity Lord. Lord, I did biochemistry, Lord, but I just want to do medicine, Lord. Medicine has always been my dream. Persistently and consistently, you are working hard in the natural. Sister, what's your name? Akofa, from where? UST, sit down. I just want to know your names. Amen. I, I want to know almost all your names before you leave. Everybody here. What do you think about that? Are your names on your camp things? What's your name? Frank. Frank. Persistent, consistent, hard Christian work. You see me? I've been preaching for a long time. Consistently and persistently hard working. I traveled uh, two weeks ago. When I landed, I fell into a program. Directly, I landed and I fell into the program which I was going going to work on. I mean, that's why I was there. I preached all the were different speakers, but I preached more than all the other people. I preached yeah, morning, afternoon, this meeting. When I have a preach in the morning, then I go to our church. I was preaching in somebody's chair. Then in the evening, I have a meeting with serious Christians. Then after that, the next morning, I have a meeting. Then in the evening, I have another meeting with uh, other people then I'll come back home then I'll pray, I'll stay in my house and I'll pray in the room praying through sometimes through the night just sitting there, just awake and pray, 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 pray then in the morning, I'll go to church then I'll come back, then I'll have a service in the evening, a miracle service in the evening then in the morning I'm on my way up to organize this and this and this for the church, then at this time I take a plane, then I go, when I arrive I fall straight into meetings about seven different meetings till 2, 3 a.m. Then in the morning we are get up, then we are going traveling to the campsite. We arrive at the camp. When we arrive, no, then it's like 
switch on again, start a preaching throughout morning, afternoon, evening, as soon as the camp is finished, right back here. I had to go from the camp. I went to Holland. I was organizing some more things for the church from the morning to the evening. The man who was even working with us, I told him that since we came, we have not even offered us offered us anything to eat. By the time we finished all the things that we were supposed from the moment we landed on, on, the, on that soil till it was 7 o'clock in the evening, it was time to go and breathe. My head was even paining me. I said, give me some paracetamol. I took some paracetamol. Let's go for miracle service in Amsterdam. We had a service. We finished. As soon as I finished, get home, have meetings with the pastor, this, this, that, talk that. I said, come at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm having breakfast with you. We'll stay there. We'll talk till 9 o'clock. From there, pack your bag straight to the airport. Come. I get to Accra. When I got to Accra, I was told, do you know there's a camp tomorrow? I said, I don't know there's any camp tomorrow. I've not been told. I said, oh, yes, I come. So I've fallen inside another camp. And here I am again. I don't need you to clap for me. I've not done anything. I'm just talking for you to see that to actually bear fruit, you need to really work hard for God. And, and if you are not prepared to if you are not prepared to work hard work, just, I mean, normal work, then you are tired. You are actually tired. So you are doing something, you are tired. Then you will never do anything much for the Lord. I'm just telling you something factual. You will never. If you think that it's something that you just... Uh, at least we have been seeing that you have been going to this place uh, England and then where is it in Nepal and some of these places uh, I also like to if these are the things that we are going to be but I think I appreciate it I, I enjoy it uh, no 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 That's, uh, you, 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 you may not know one time I was with somebody abroad and he said I, I think that um, I'm actually surprised at your life you see, when we have been hearing that you have been going to this place and others, we have been thinking of something else. Something else. But you may not know what is involved. And if you are ever going to do anything for God, you are going to work hard. And some of you, you don't want to work hard. You want something to be given to yourself. And when you ask such people, they say, if the, if the Lord wills, if, if the Lord wants for me to be a pastor, pastor, I'm ready to be a pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be a pastor because ready that the Lord wants me to be. I'm ready to be. A, I just pray that the Lord, if the Lord wants, I just touch me, Lord. I'm ready anything at all. The Lord wants. Liar. The things that you are ready to work hard at, we see you working hard for those things. We see you going to get your master's degree and writing letters to go to America. I just want to go to the States. Or I just want to go for my master's and MBA. Lord, I, I want to do my, I become a chartered accountant. Oh, Lord. I, 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 oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not interested in many of these things. I'm just looking for certain basic things in my life. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you find some basic things in the house of the Lord as well uh, why don't you find some basic things in the house of the Lord Pastor, Pastor I don't have time for uh, this um, uh, preaching another because my, I'm very gentle and I don't I mean I'm not that type <laughs> I'm not that type you are not that type. But when it comes to what you really want, then we see the type that you are. You are so aggressive. You see somebody talking to you and be like, who is he talking to? Well, who is he talking to? Who does she think she is? Why? Ah! And then the, the, the thing has come. The one who said, I'm not, I'm not very, I don't like, I don't like, this, I don't like talking too much. But you like quarreling. You can quarrel about what you think is important.
My side has time for a lot of friends. I just want it to know that I'm my mommy. I don't. I mean, I've come to church on a Tuesday and then it's Sunday. And my ticket is okay because me, my father has not got a lot of money. And then if I've come to the school, I don't want uh, this. In, I don't want anything to for him not to be happy with me. And I want to. I just want to do this my school. I want to do the work of God. I mean, it's just on Sunday and Tuesday. I think it's okay. You can go and sit down for 12 hours to do this. And when you, when you finish doing it, you, it's not nice. One day I, I, I saw somebody, the person had gone long. I said, did you look at the shape of your head before you went to do this hairstyle? You have to know the shape of your head before you do such a hair. Every shape, head shape, and the hairstyle that goes with it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Anybody who does well and best food is hard working, diligent person. It's as simple as that. And the fact that there's nothing coming from you is probably that's the thing. This hair is it's not wriggling. It's not moving. There's no energy. We want a wriggling, tell somebody, I want a wriggling Christian. I want a pulsating believer. I want an alive believer. I want somebody who has strength and energy and hard work. I want somebody who's ready to go for many meetings. I want somebody who's ready to go for meetings in the morning, meetings in the evening, meetings on Monday, meetings on Tuesday, meetings on Wednesday, meetings on Thursday, meetings on Fridays, camps on Saturdays, church service on Sunday morning, and miracle service on Sunday evenings. I want somebody who's ready to work. I'm looking for workers. Bible says unto good works, not unto good relaxations, or unto good vacations, or unto good holidays. He said unto good works, or good parties, good works. Are you ready to work? Amen. So diligence, add to your faith, virtue. Up to your faith, you must believe. You must believe. Huh? You don't believe in things. Like I was telling you, we preach and preach, you still don't believe. Then to your faith, virtue. Virtue is good character. Huh? Only I sense. Two ladies to go and start a church before we realized they were quarreling. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! No, no, no. And then she said that, and, then, and I'm, I don't like that thing. And I'm, I don't like that. Stop. Stop. You, you, what is wrong with you? You've got to cure your bad character traits. I mean, I don't have any bad character traits. It's a very bad girl. That, that is the first problem with you is that you can't see bad things in yourself you can't you are not honest honesty says i am i am i am how problems end when we say i am it's me so much improvement comes when you say i am i don't find it difficult to say sorry i've often told my wife i find it more easy to say sorry than she does because in every marriage somebody finds it easier to say than the other because anything you say is, is true. I believe it must be true. Yeah. I'm sorry, please forgive me. A sinner, a sinner like me, I've married you. I must be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my mind works. Yeah. Or you don't uh, appreciate what I'm saying. You don't enjoy what I'm saying. Yeah. A sinner like me, you've married me. I must be wrong. I must be wrong. Forgive me. That is how I, my mind works. 
you must begin to be able to see as soon as you start to say sorry quarrels and problems and situations that say, I am I am is true with me if you can start to be honest about yourself and I'm jealous some of you suffer from jealousy sometimes I ask the ladies you know to, I was talking to one lady brother proposed to her she didn't want to marry him I don't want to marry him I don't want to marry him so I, I, so I talked to her I said will you not marry him no I don't I don't want to marry him why don't you want to marry him I don't feel like it are you sure yes So then the brother went and found a friend of this sister. Ah, I lose another of the same kind. <laughs> and then I'm very, very surprised at at uh, this um, how could she do that? I said, do what? How could she marry him? Why? I thought you said you didn't want him. Yes, but she's my friend. And I thought that at least. I mean, how? I mean, how? Oh. You don't enjoy what I'm saying. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what I'm saying is not something you know about. You say you don't like the guy. Now the guy is going to my son. I don't want that. I mean, how? I mean, I mean, she's my sister. I mean, how could she do that? I mean, somebody, you know that. I mean, you, you know what? You know what? You say you don't want him. And he has gone. And he has gone to my son. I've talked to you. I've asked you a hundred million times. I don't want him. I said I don't like him. Look at how he is something too much in me. It makes me feel feverish and shivering. I'm shivering. I don't. And then since you don't like it you don't want it the brother goes and says uh, sister um, my name is uh, this you know, Shugunogo Bangoshi <laughs> and uh, I'm interested in uh, this in a certain proposal that I have to make to you in the evening so if you see me in the evening for the proposals I will be presenting them <laughs> Sister, you just have to accept that you are jealous. You are full of jealousy and envy and hatred and all kinds of devilish things in your spirit. You've got to get rid of all those things. You said you didn't want him. He's gone for somebody. So just stretch your hand and say, Amen, brother. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. Nobody you see it. Say, and then you will be walking around. Look at that. I, they won't even, I, I don't know if they will have a child. Hey. And look at them, their wedding is not nice. Look at their face. <laughs> you are jealous, sister. You are jealous. It is paining you. That little boy is paining you. It's paining you. It's paining you. I know it's paining you. If you cannot get rid of these kind of things, you will grow up when it's time for you to preach. You will stand there with all your with all the hatreds and the jealousies and envies and pride and it will be in you and you, you will speak the hatred and the jealousy against people you don't like. And if you are a woman, your church will never grow because you will always drive out the women from the church. You will always be fighting against other women. When you see oh, another woman come in and she, and she looks beautiful and you, you look at her face and, and you look at your face. You know, anybody who has eaten 
Therefore, listen, anybody who has eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil becomes insecure. Becomes worried about what oh, is my is my stomach okay? My thighs are too small or too big. Or oh, here is becoming longer or I don't know when I see myself. You see, other than it, they went there, kept their job, and said, let's go to the house of the infidel. They don't really think about anything. Yeah, just look. As soon as they act, it's up. Ah! <laughs> I'm not feeling sure whether I am beautiful. Insecurity and fear is one of the fruits of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So if you are a woman, then you are ministry. You will look at others and sister that comes to them. Good evening, Papa. How are you? I'm coming to join your church. And then uh, you see who, who is she? What is her name? Hot? What, what, what is she talking about? Uh, small, small girl, what about come? Hey, come. come. You say your name is what? If you have any problem, right, see me directly, right? Don't go around. I don't enjoy it. Please, girl. Please, girl. I, I, I don't. Hey. Look, I've seen a church where the pastors were women and they were driving away all the girls, the ladies from the church. One day I met one of the women who had dreams. She, she said, she's, they are driving away all the women from the church. Oh yeah, all the things are not, you see, my preachings, none of them is theoretical. If I've seen one before, and I will preach with it. They are real things. So if you can't get virtue, you can't really bear much fruit. That's, and many women don't seem to be able to get that virtue because they, they don't seem to overcome some of these excursions that come. There's a word you need to learn as a woman. It's a word in the Hebrew is chayil. Chayil. We'll talk about it before we close. Amen. Are you listening to me? Are you hearing me loud and clear? Yeah. It's time to get the virtue, jealousy, and pride. Pride, pride is, is, is looking down on people. Pride is a sort of confidence that leads to quarrels and unhappiness. Contention. The Bible says only by pride cometh contention. Some of you should ask yourself the constant bickerings and currently you're not happy about this and this and that and that and that. It's often pride. Pride. Only by pride cometh content. When we can get these things out of us, humility, fear. Some of us are so afraid. They are afraid of you're afraid of, 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 of everything. Afraid of afraid of not getting married. When you get a husband, you're afraid of losing him. You are when you have your husband, you're afraid of, of, of this happening and afraid of that. Eh? Afraid of him talking to somebody, afraid of that. All sorts of things you are fearful. Full of fear. You've got to get rid of this. Otherwise, you're not going to do well. You're not going to do well. The higher you go. If you read about John Wesley's wife, he married her. He married her. He married her. And she was so afraid. She had one of the best husbands you could ever have. She was so afraid of, of him. Why is he talking to people who are writing to him? She was afraid of the people. She was afraid of it. He told her, open my letters and try and help me to respond. She was afraid of it. She saw certain people who would write to her. said, who is this person? Who is this person? What is this? What is this? Continue and until in the end, they had to break up. In the end, they were separated. The fun of the Methodist church separated and she was living somewhere for 20 years. When she died, he, she was buried. It was four days after she was buried, but they came to tell John Wesley that his wife was is dead and buried. And as I read the book at the end, they said that the kindest way we can summarize that woman is to say that she was mentally insane. Yeah, that's, 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 how, that's how the book ended. That's the kindest way that we can summarize that. These are, and these are things that, you see, without virtue, 
Oh. You can be whatever. You can be quoting scriptures and whatever. You need to get rid of some of these terrible things. Some of you can remove your clothes at any time. Oh, I don't enjoy that. You must not be able to just, I mean, just sleep with anybody. You know? My wife was telling me about a talk show that she was watching in America for five minutes. She said she couldn't continue watching it. This one is saying, uh, this one, uh, okay, my child. And this one's father said, okay, you are not the father. And different men. It's okay, I slept with you in the evening. I slept with this one in the morning. I met this guy at the bus stop. And so we slept at, uh, after this. And then we did this. And so which of them is the father? And they'll be doing a test. And it's okay, I'm sorry to announce you that you are not the father. I'm sorry that you are not the father. You are the father from the DNA test. I don't think I don't enjoy it. I don't appreciate it. And some of you can do that because you've done it and done it and done it and done it and done it. It must be cured. You must be cured of it. Some of you are so impatient. You can't wait for anything. Your tongues are like fire. When you speak with rudeness and pride and insolence, you cannot be a pastor of a church and be rude to people. Even when they are rude to you, you have to just, you know. I've been, I've, I've had my church and come to beat me before. Oh yeah. I mean, they didn't get me, but they were coming to beat me. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've had people being rude to me. I've had people insulting me. I've had people kissing me. Different people stand and kiss you. You, you this and that. You call yourself a man of God. This and that and that and that. This will happen to you. This, hey! Maybe you, you don't know. And you will be with people like that. People swear you and this, and this thing criticize you. I have people who have been against me and are now with me as though they never said anything. You just be flowing with them and flowing with them and flowing with them. If you want to react to all these things, you don't have patience, no love, accommodation. You can't accommodate. You can't accommodate. You can't accommodate even a house help in the house. I, 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 don't, I don't want this girl. I, that's, that, I mean, I, yeah. What's what, 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 what the spirit that there's no love in you at all? I mean, no accommodation. Somebody's looking after your child. And you yourself looking after your own child, it's not easy. And the person is looking after your child for you. And struggling to look after you. Can you not see that it's not easy? And can you not have any accommodation in your heart for people who are not... And not everybody is perfect. Oh, man. That's why the Bible says that women should not be there. Because when the women become beastly and they are in charge... Go read your Bible. I believe that. And if you church of Pentecost another day, don't have all these women are preaching and oh no. They don't have <laughs> Yeah. It's our church that we are encouraging one. So if I hear any woman standing somewhere to say that and he, he's always saying the same things about the women and then he's saying things that we are uh, so, what else, what or something, something. I don't uh, like that. Oh, no. There's no church that you see where women are encouraging you to be lady pastors. You said women, start the church. Please do this. Look at our elders from the campus. Look at them sitting in front of the two little girls. Yeah. You should rather say, hey, man, there's no place that we can have somebody who is so much encouraging us in spite of our excursions into the flesh and into all kinds of things. He's still accommodating our excursions. Amen. Amen. Virtue. You need good character. John, you get it? Yeah. And some of you, you are so sweet. God, very but behind the sweetness. <sighs> Tight boots. <laughs> and to your virtue, add knowledge. Is it a wonder that you can never be a shepherd or an elder when you don't read your Bible? 
on a daily basis will you know things huh will you know things what i'm preaching to you now i don't have been talking for some time now i don't have any notes or anything i'm not, I'm not reading from anywhere the books that i'm i have here they are not i'm not reading i'm not i have nothing to do with that i've not yet reached my what i'm coming to talk about but i'm talking to you and i'm preaching to you from the bible i know where some of the things are you get what I'm saying? I can, if you say this, I can find it. Or anything that comes to my mind, I sort of know somehow where it is. I don't even, at first I used to need to have my own Bible. A particular Bible that I use for preaching. But now I don't have any particular Bible. Any Bible I can use any Bible to preach. I've not used this Bible before. It's a, a new Bible that I'm using. I'm just using it. I don't particularly need any particular Bible. I know where a whole lot of things are. Knowledge. knowledge tips books you don't read a book you don't read when i travel often the things that are so heavy with me are books all i just have are books i have so many books and i buy books because i'll read them i have books in my toilet i read when i sit on that that place what are you saying? I'm saying things that you should learn. How would I say? Why would I, would I tell you something like that if I was not trying to tell you for your benefit? But uh, some of us, we, when we go, we don't uh, listen to uh, delay at all. We just uh, go. <laughs> you see, you like arguing about everything. I, I don't want to talk to you again. You need knowledge. I said you need knowledge. 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 Where's your Bible reading? I've been listening to tapes. Ah, Bible. Bible. Do you know what's in the Bible? What is in John chapter 1? Huh? You see, every chapter, almost every chapter of the Bible, you, you have an idea of something that is there. John chapter 1. What's in John chapter 1? In the beginning of the word, those things and the, the word, and he came to his own, and his own received him not. To as many as believe, he gave power to become the sons of God, and so on. There was a man sent from God. His name was John, and averagely. What is in chapter 2? Wedding. There's a wedding there and the healing of the nobleman's son. John chapter 3. You don't know anything. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Uh, Nicodemus. Remember the story. So, so when you are preaching and you say, I tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, unless a man is born again, then you see, born again. Wait, 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 wait. John chapter 3. Uh, so turn your Bibles to John chapter 3, then, you know, you, you go. But you don't know. What is in John chapter 3? You never knew, don't know. John chapter 4. Huh? The, the whole of chapter 4. The woman of Samaria. The woman who had five boyfriends. You don't know that story? Jesus said, give me to drink. Remember that story? And the woman said, you being a... Jew are asking me a Samaritan to give you to drink. And Jesus said, if you knew who was asking him, you would say, you know, you, 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 you would ask me to give you the real water. And then uh, 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 he went on and on and on and he said, go and bring, I perceive that you are a person, go and bring your husband. And he said, I don't have a husband. He said, you have said it correctly, there's no husband. Just moving mulliganously around. You know, we know your ways. Then after that, uh, uh, he went on and on, and his disciples came back and brought food. Remember? Are you there? Yeah. Are you there? They brought food, and what did he say when they brought the food? Yeah. I have meat. You don't know about my meat. My meat is to do his will and to finish his work. Don't say that the, the harvest is coming. See, the harvest is white. You know, just a big idea. John chapter five. 
pool, the man, the whole, that story, John chapter 5, is the man with the pool, he had been there for 37 years, and the whole story of John chapter 5, what's John chapter 6? There's a feeling of the 5,000 there, and that's where they eat my flesh, that place eat my flesh, drink my blood. So if you are a pastor, you are preaching and you are trying to remember something for communion, something, something, something. John chapter 6, thickly, you have an idea. John chapter 7, what is there? John chapter 7, Jesus was going to the feast. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And that is famous things. He must think the last day of the feast, his brother told him. That's where his brother told him, go. And he, he did not go because he knew. He didn't trust. He knew that they didn't trust him. It was in John chapter 8. You know, there's some famous things there. John chapter 8, huh? Eh? You shall know the truth. The truth has set you free. You are of your father, the devil. You know, after this come, please, you go and read John. Try and know it. Knowledge. When you add knowledge, this is not listening to tape. This is just knowledge, just general. You are knowing, knowing. knowing. Well, the Spirit of God can speak to you. That's John chapter John chapter 9. He's the blind man who sinned that this man was blind. Huh? Was it his father? What is it? What is this? That's where Jesus said, I must work while it is day. For the night comes when no one can work. The whole of that chapter. What is in John chapter 10? I'm the shepherd. And what is John 10 10? The thief comes to steal this, that. All those stories. You get it? Chapter 11. Lazarus was raised from the dead in chapter 11. The whole story is about Lazarus and, uh, and the resurrection and the life and he that believes in me will rise again and so on. And that's in chapter 12. Huh? That is where Jesus said, except a seed die and fall into the ground, it abides alone. And so on. John chapter 12. What is in chapter 13? We just read chapter 13, please. Uh, we just read chapter 13. Shama, you know. He was talking to Judas throughout the whole of chapter 13. You know, some people say 13 is an unlucky number. I realized that it was not an unfortunate uh, story that was in there. <laughs> and what is in chapter 14 of John? works that I do, that you shall do also, and greater works, and I go to the Father, and I will send you a comforter. Those, I mean, generally, you know knowledge. John chapter 15. Ah, the vine. So, you are a preacher, you know, you've got to somehow have a general idea. John chapter, I'm the, I'm the vine, you are the branches, I've called you that you may bear fruit, your fruit may abide. And what is in chapter 16? Hitherto, huh? Hitherto, have you asked nothing in my name? Just Psalm 16, 23, 24. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Is that not so? And also about the comforter. In this world you have persecutions. In verse 33, you have persecutions. But I'm with you. What is in chapter 17? Praying for the disciples. Praying for his What is in chapter 18? Jesus was arrested. All the bad things were happening. Huh? In chapter 18, he was talking to Pontius Pilate, and it wasn't. It was some way. Huh? What is in chapter 20? Uh, chapter 19? Huh? His crucifixion and death. And what is in chapter 20? That's why he breathed on them. And what is in chapter 21? Peter said he was going fishing. He was going back. He was going back fishing. Huh? <laughs> back to the Pharaoh mission. <laughs> and chapter 22. 
chapter 22. You see, when I first became a Christian, we were told to read John, one chapter of John every day. In three weeks, you finish, because there are 21 chapters. You see? Yeah, that was one of the things. Okay, from now, read one, one chapter every day. And that's where Jesus told, feed my lamb, feed my sheep. Do you love me? You know, an idea. Ephesians chapter 1, what is there? Grace and truth be multiplied to you. And the prayer, I've been praying for you for the spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of me. You remember that, that prayer? It is there, what is it, chapter 2? Huh? Ephesians 2. You were saved when we walked after the course of this world. And then we are saved by grace, by faith. We are created on good works in Christ Jesus. Is that also in verse 10? Vaguely, you have some idea. Chapter 3, what is there? Our life is hid with... No, no, that's Colossians. The depth, that you may know the depth and the height and the love of God. That's why he prays. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly average. I have an idea. Ephesians chapter 4. That's where all the practical things are. Huh? The new man, and you know, you are created in Christ Jesus. Don't lie, don't steal. The one still, let him just so steal no more. Uh, be, be angry and sin not. Huh? Those who do not work should work. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. That's right. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Walk in love as dear children of God. Marriage. It talks about marriage in chapter 5. Is that not so? And then chapter 6. Parents should love their children. Obey their... So if you don't have this some kind of rough knowledge even, how would you be a preacher? You will be lost every time. You'll be afraid that they will call you to preach. You'll be scared. You'll be so frightened. Because you don't know anything. You never read your Bible. You never listen to a tape. You never read a book. You never get anything for yourself. Because you don't have knowledge. So you need virtue. That's why I say the spirit must be alive. Must be strong. Amen. Must be diligent to work hard. Hallelujah. What's the next one? Temperance. Yeah. And to knowledge what? Temperance. Everything average. Not extreme in anything. You get it? You are not extreme. Because if you have extreme ideas, ask for me, I will not marry till I'm 40. As for me, I don't believe in this. As for me, I don't believe that. When you have extreme ideas and extreme things that you are following, you can never really serve. Because no truth can be taken too far. And then it becomes almost an error. And everything is true, but if you, you, have, to, you have to be balanced. You see, I'm, I, am, I am a preacher. I'm preaching. But I have a family. I have a wife. I have children. I love my wife. I love my children. I look after them. I have time for them. Maybe I don't have time for them. I have time for them. If you don't have time for your wife or your husband, you are in trouble. But I have time for my, I have time for my wife. I talk to my wife. I allow my wife likes talking and I, I like to listen to all that she has to say. I have come to see that it's medicine for her, for her to talk and I'm listening. And she's become happy. And I realize that she's happy. So I, I have time for that. Keep talking, sister. I'll just, I'll just say, man. Oh yeah, it's true. Yeah, okay. What happened? I see. Yeah, already. Yeah. What did she say? I see. Okay. She'll be giving me the stories. I have time. So there's balance, temperance. I don't just pray. At times I don't pray because I'm going to talk to my wife so that she will be happy because she's a human being. I, I married her. If I wanted to be apostle, uh, whatever, without whatever, I shouldn't have married. Oh, you don't appreciate what I'm saying. Yeah, I shouldn't have married. I shouldn't have married. I shouldn't have married. If I didn't want to have a marriage, I shouldn't have married. I should have just 
color and I'll still be moving under the anointing. I'll give you theories of the of marriage. Yeah. If you are a woman, you must cook. Know how to cook. Careful now. Pastor, but we know how to cook. Not not always. This message continues on the next track. Keep listening. <laughs>